situation. And might I state that she had been in this condition for 12 years. That's a long time. Amen. Amen. That's a long time to put up with anything that's bothering you. Amen. Amen. And she heard of Jesus. Now note this. When she heard of Jesus, I don't know what it was she heard, but it had to be some good news. Amen. I know when I heard about Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm not talking about the first time I heard, but when I really heard. Amen. See, hearing is when you hear enough to be convinced this will work for me and I'm going to try. Amen. Many people have heard about him, but they fluff it off as though it's a, of non-consequence and, 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 and not deserving of their time or energy. This woman had been in such bad shape, had been in such bad shape, things and wrong swords, she said, well, it can't hurt to try. Amen. In fact, somebody said, I want you to try everything. All right. Everything else has failed. Right. Try Jesus. Amen. Or it'd be nice if we try Jesus first, but somehow in, in, in this human frame, right, we gotta try everything else. Right. Often wonder why we don't go to Jesus first up. Sometimes I think because we don't want to, usually when you go to someone, you have to abide by their rules and regulations. You have to meet certain standards. Yeah, and if you go to the bank to borrow some money, you got to go by whatever their standards are. You have to pay their interest rate. Are you willing to do this when you sign on the line? Are you going to fulfill your commitment? We're going to do something for you, but we want you to do something for us. Amen. Pay on time. Pay a certain amount. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. So you have to abide by their rules and regulations. So when you come to Jesus, I think so many people won't come to Jesus now because they know they have to owe him something. Amen. When a person reaches out and helps you, you're obligated. Yes. Got to be an obligation. If I do something for you, you got to do something for me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And all that God requires of us and wants of us is to live right. Yes, Amen. Amen. Recognize that we're undone and can't make it without him and commit ourselves Amen. to a joyous life. You know, living for God is a wonderful life. Are y'all going to be preaching today? Amen. Amen. And so this woman heard about Jesus. And whatever she heard, amen, I don't know whether it was the men whose eyes were open that were blinded. Amen. I don't know if she heard about lepers. I don't know if she heard about how he walked the water. But any of those things, any one of those things would have convinced me, well, I know it may not have been healing when he walked the water, but anybody that can calm a rage and see it. Amen. Oh, come on. Yes. Anybody that can feed 5,000 besides women and children, if anybody can feed 4,000, uh, come on. Amen. And then have 12 baskets uh, left, respectively, and then seven baskets left. Amen. Amen. If he can do all that, maybe he can do something. Right. And then she just may have heard something about a healing. Yes. May have heard about Peter's mother in law. Yes who was stricken with a fever. Right. She might have said, well, that's not as long as mine, maybe mine has long and been entrenched, but what about, oh my, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. What about the man that was born blind? Yeah. What about the man that sit in the gate for 38 years? Yeah. Sit in the pool of Bethesda, 38 years? Yeah. I don't know what she heard. Yeah. I don't know what you've been hearing about Jesus. Yeah. Maybe you've come to this point right now, I've been through what I've been through enough. Yeah. Now something when things grow worse. I would say this woman had a play. Yeah. She recognized it as a play. Yeah. That play being a whipping. Yeah. Defined as a whipping. You know, trouble can whoop you. Yeah. It can whoop you in the morning. Yeah. It can whoop you in the noon day. Yeah. It can whoop you right in front of your friends. Yeah. It can whip you on the job. Yeah. It can whip you so you gotta leave the job and go home and miss days of work. Yeah. When a thing really whips you. I'm just convinced you got to get sick of a whooping. Yeah. And I'm saying, I ain't going to take this no more. Yeah. Some folk take whippings, you know, and, and they do something about it. Amen. I read so many times you read about how uh, wives are being physically abused by husbands. Yeah. Not necessarily it doesn't have to be a husband, it can be a boyfriend or whatever. Yeah. And they just whip them and whip them. But then when they make up their mind, yeah. I ain't going to take this whipping no more. It's almost like, I don't know, they do different things. Some get guns, some get knives. I'm not teaching violence, but I'm just sharing what folk do when they get fed up. And some of them say, you better not go to sleep. And then let your imagination run. Why are they trying to stop the whipping? But sometimes there are situations in life that striking out won't change things. 
You're going to come up against something that no matter what you do, it can't stop that thing. Then that's what we call being in the God area. Right. This woman was in the God area. Had a sickness. Spent all her money. All her money was gone, but none better, but rather grew worse. Maybe somebody's in the God area listening to me right now. You tried everything. Spent all your money. Took advice from everybody you could take advice from. And nothing is working. Now you are yet being whipped by that situation. Being whipped in the morning. Being whipped in the noon, being whipped in the midnight hour, being whipped in your pocketbook, being whipped in your finances, being whipped in your relationship, being whipped on your job, being whipped in your neighborhood, some being whipped by your children, 